Welcome to the Haunted Book Club Podcast Valentine Special. Enjoy. Let's start off today's episode with Bean's Joke of the Day. about Ontario's own lover's leap. Many places all over the world have a legend that follows the same plot points. Would-be lovers, broken hearts, then the end of more than just the story. This one takes place in Hamilton, Ontario, specifically at Albion Falls. Jane Riley was born to a low-income family in the early 1800s. She had a regular life, and when she came of age, she started courting. One boy, named Joseph Russo, was in her opinion, her true love. She dreamed of their lives together. She dreamed of their lives together, but try as she might, He only saw her as a friend. Jane kept at it, believing she could change his mind. Then one day, news came around that Joseph was engaged. This made Jane snap. She went for a walk to try to calm down. Further and further she walked, biting her nails and muttering to herself until she heard the rushing of water. She was by Albion Falls. She went to the falls and just sat and watched the water flow by. The sun moved to the other side of the sky, and she just sat there staring. Finally, she gave in to the call of death. She climbed up to the top of the falls, stood there a moment, and she would be the lover that took the leap. This next story is the legend of Casey's Lane. This story takes place in the west end of St. John's, Newfoundland, on a street called Casey's Lane. There lived a young man named Matt Trilligan, who was a bit of a wild child and kind of reckless. The perfect attitude for a sailor, in his opinion. He started sailing at an early age, and by the time he was 18, he had seen most of the world sometimes gone long enough that his family would just about give up hope of seeing him again. And then he'd show up a few weeks later. Once, when he was back home, he met a young woman named Kathleen. They were smitten from the start, and they quickly fell madly in love. He kept sailing while they were dating, but he was always anxious to get back to his love. After a while, they got engaged and planned their wedding for the next spring. Matt kept sailing and would often bring gifts to his soon-to-be bride. When the last of the snow had thawed and spring had arrived, their wedding day finally came. As tradition at the time, the bride and groom got ready at opposite ends of the house. Matt's family members helped Kathleen get ready and tried to give her cold feet. You know me, Ducky. It's a hard life. Matt could go off one day and not come back. Little did anyone know that Matt was eavesdropping, worried that his family would do exactly what they were doing, burst through the door and embraced Kathleen. There's nothing you need worry about. I promise to you this day. He went over to the wall and took down a rather large crucifix and brought it to his bride. In placing my hand on this crucifix, I promise to you, if death were to come for me while I'm away, I in turn will come for you so we don't have to live without each other. Kathleen's eyes were wide and sparkly as she added, And with my hand on yours, I promise 
that if death comes for you and you come for me, no matter our final destination, whether it's heaven or hell, I will gladly go with you, my love. The rest of the day was as lovely as one could wish for. The couple went on to move in with his family on Casey's Lane. But days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months. Word spread around St. John's from some of the other sailors that the ship that Matt had been on had sunk. It was nearing December, and even the company that had owned the ship had given up on her. But not Kathleen. He made me a promise, she thought. He wouldn't break it. His family grew concerned for her mental health. And one extraordinarily foggy night, the Trilligan family's neighbor, Mrs. Cleary, saw something that made her breathe a breath of relief. There, on the street, was Matt in the flesh, so it seemed. But with each step he made closer to the house, it made Mrs. Cleary uneasy. When he got to right outside her window, she was able to finally get a good look at him. He was now pale, his usually wild blonde hair now sat in brown piles on his head, like someone had poured mud over his head. She stood there frozen in fear, watching as he stepped up to the front door. Onward they went up Casey's Lane into the horizon. Mrs. Cleary passed out in fright. When she awoke, she went over to the Trillingate's house. Knocking at the door, she was greeted by Matt's mother. Hello, I came to see Kathleen. Yes, of course, come on in. She's up in her room. Give me a minute to go get her. She hurried as quickly as the woman of her advanced age could. Then, as Miss Cleary expected, a scream came from the bedroom upstairs. Mrs. Cleary and Matt's father both ran up to see what was the matter. They saw Kathleen with her long, dark hair, half off the bed, head in a small puddle on the floor, along some seaweed and some shells. It seems that Matt Trilligan had kept his promise to his wife. There's no doubt about that. Thank you for listening to the Haunted Book Club podcast. If you have any stories that you'd like me to read please email me at haunted.bookclub.podcast at gmail.com. Have a great day.